I first sort of came into contact with the scientific organisation when I was um, twice actually, when I was about 14 and 16, I decided that marine science was sort of the thing that I wanted to get into, sort of through fishing and diving and all the rest of it. And I actually went down to CSRO Fisheries when they were based in Cronulla, because I lived just down the road, and um, sort of went up and said, I want to be a marine biologist, what do I do? And at that stage I was told, um, do you want to work in the field or do you want to work in an office? And I said, in the field, and they said, do, do a technician certificate. I really enjoy working here and I really enjoy working as a technical assistant. When I'm at sea on the ship, uh, it's a fairly messy occupation, especially working off Tasmania because it's rough and it's cold and people get seasick and the shift work is quite demanding as well because we work eight hours on and eight hours off most of the time. And um, the, the wet lab can you know, be very messy, there's a lot of blood and guts and all the rest of it, but um, it's fun. <laughs> Most of my work at Camden is concerned with testing um, potential preparations for vaccine. Um, we're addressing the question, will this preparation that we've made over in, at CSIRO work in protecting sheep against getting foot rot? The work in the laboratory is fundamental to what we do out here. Uh, in the laboratory we actually manipulate the genes to make the organisms that we're going to use in the vaccines. And once we have those organisms, we come out here and we inject the sheep. I really love this job. In fact, when I began it, I was a little bit nervous about it because it was a new area, but the people I work with are just great. And the work I'm actually doing is, is very exciting and very stimulating. The project that I'm working on at the moment is very new and it's um, making um, a monomorphous or glassy material out of metals and uh, it's basically um, getting bits of mild steel, melting them up together and then um, by a process of melt spinning you are able to eject the material onto a fast spinning wheel and make these long thin ribbons. Equipment uh, is Maybe a bit daunting at first sight when you think, oh, I've got to learn how to use this, but it's, it's just like using a new kitchen gadget or a new vacuum cleaner or, or, or a new car or something. Just, it, you know, might spend half an hour feeling a bit nervous that you might do something wrong, but then you get used to it and it's um, very easy to use the equipment and, and, and challenging still because you've got to get the right results out. So it's, um, mm, it's good. 70.5. The three projects that I'm working on at the moment uh, involve firstly vine breeding and I'm breeding uh, grapes that may be suitable as table grapes, uh, dried fruit, um, rootstocks or wine varieties. And I'm also working on dried uh, fruit evaluation and this involves evaluating some of the seedlings in the field in the hope of producing a a drying variety that has disease resistance and also produces well. I think the, the most exciting part of my job is every year when the seedlings from the preceding year's pollinations come up and all the work that has gone into producing these seeds and planting the seeds and when they first come up it's very exciting. The sort of job I have doesn't really involve clock watching. You can get in, involved in, in projects that are so exciting that uh, you come out at, at night to continue working on them, or especially if they're going well or on the weekend. Um, there doesn't ever seem to be enough time to do everything I'd like to do. I seem to have been interested in science or in wanting to be a scientist as long as I can remember, but I can't really understand why that was. So I've always liked solving problems. The challenge is not in thinking of the problems, but in thinking of ways to, to solve them, I think. Uh, that's really where I get my high out of science, is, is uh, starting off with a, with a problem and then putting together inputs from a whole lot of areas, like reading scientific literature, talking to people, um, and suddenly thinking, aha! there's maybe a way to find out the answer to this problem. So then you go away into the lab and you work out some experiments to do and uh, 
eventually you get results and then you figure out whether you are right or wrong. So it's really putting up a, an idea and then working out, you know, how can I sort this problem out and, and coming up with an answer in the end which may prove you right or wrong, but the process is, is pretty exciting. Hi, Trevor, what's, how do the results look? In the lab I have three people working directly with me or for me, um, but I'm also collaborating with lots of other people so that um, it's much more rewarding if you can get lots of ideas put into, into an area rather than sitting in isolation in your lab and not really going out into the world and, and talking to people. Very healthy. So I think one of the really good aspects of what I do is that you, you're always moving on to something new, you're learning something all the time, becoming aware of some new aspect of what you're doing, interacting with new people and I think I'd find it very boring if I was really doing the same thing day after day but the, uh, the way that it works is, is really much more exciting than that. Geology has a, a broad section of people, there seem to be people from all sorts of backgrounds and it's not a traditional male field even though this is generally thought to be the case. There have been lots of women geologists in Australian history and as many in the past as there are now. Geologists are, are in general very interesting people because they travel a lot and they see a lot of different places and different people. Most geologists you meet have been all, all over the world lots of times. I've been working on a large project in association with Mount Isa Mines on the origin of the copper ores at Mount Isa. And we've been looking at the, where the sulphur and the copper ores has come from. Most of the time it's, it's good fun doing field work and going to places like Mount Isa is especially so, where you get to go underground and you can be a kilometre and a half beneath the surface. And, and it's, it's just a different environment. At present, I'm looking at the stable isotopes of water and plants and rocks. These sort of studies are useful for looking particularly from my point of view, for looking at fluid processes in the Earth's crust, and more specifically, fluids that are associated with ore deposition. I enjoy the job tremendously. I consider myself very lucky to have a job where I can combine a love of the sea with adventure and the challenge of collecting information and doing something with it later on. What we're doing when we tag the sharks, we bring them aboard, tag them and release them, this will later provide us with information on the size of the shark populations, their migration, and it will assist with our studies on age and growth of sharks. The work I'm doing on tropical sharks is very important because shark populations are very sensitive to overfishing. In, in this situation, we already have an existing Taiwanese and Australian fishery, and it's important that the stocks be conserved so the fishery doesn't go into rapid decline. My job as cruise leader involves discussions with the, the ship's skipper and crew on uh, methods of fishing, where we're going to fish, how we're going to fish. Very often we're fishing well out of sight of land sometimes over 100 kilometres from the, the nearest land, so you're not likely to see another ship or the shore or anything. On the boat, well, that's the highlight of the job, really. You get away from shorebound life, being at sea, thrown together with a group of people, your experiences are all equal, you have uh, times of rough weather, long hours of work, um, 
you all enjoy the same beautiful sunsets, you're thrown together. And there is a real camaraderie that develops and an intimacy which is very hard to define to someone who hasn't experienced it. it. It's a real joy for me. And as I said, the, the highlight of the job. Because I'm a research scientist, I'm my own boss. Um, I know exactly what I have to get done. When I do it or how I go about it is my own business. It, it, it really is up to me how, how it all, how my day is planned. It's, it's, it's fantastic like that. And uh, it's probably one of the few jobs where you would have the, the freedom to work in, um, uh, I guess, in, in the way you want to, depending on how you're feeling at the time. So I'm very lucky. At CSIRO, we do have uh, probably uh, more male scientists than, than women, but it's never posed a problem because I think you're treated as you're on your own merits. And if you show initiative, and particularly if you're interested in your work, then what sex you are doesn't come into it. I think you're, you're um, put into a category depending on how much interest you have in your work. I've, one of the things I find most interesting about science and my job is, is the chance to do a variety of things, not just to do lab work, but also to be involved in policy making and um, seeing the broader issues of science and how they relate to society. I think, to me anyway, that's a much more interesting thing than just working in the lab and, and working in isolation from the rest of the world. Here at the university, we're growing up for a common... Certainly when I started in science, I really had no idea that, that 50% of my time would be spent communicating in some way, either by writing or by going out and talking to people about what I was doing. Well, I guess one of the most important things is communicating the sort of work that you're doing. Um, it, it may be the world's greatest science and, and so relevant to everyone, but if you just do the experiments in your laboratory and, and maybe make some lab notes and stick it away in a drawer, it doesn't do anybody any good. One of the most interesting parts of being a scientist is you do meet a lot of people um, through this dissemination of information. You um, often go overseas, um, like I was in the United States last year for six months on a scholarship which I won, and uh, I met just wonderful people all over the States, and it was, um, it was just um, an opportunity which you wouldn't get normally. I think uh, anybody can go into this sort of research provided they're enthusiastic and they're motivated about wanting to make achievements in, the, in that particular area that they're working in. You don't have to be necessarily really bright, you don't have to be the sort of person that came top of the class that was always very well behaved and very favoured by the teachers. You have to be somebody who's innovative, perhaps creative and willing to work reasonably hard. But of course if you like your work then you want to work hard. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female, you're treated in the manner in which you carry out your work. People do what they can do. If, if you can't handle a shark, you ask for help. It doesn't matter whether you're male or female. There's going to be a shark that you can't get your hands around and you ask for help. And each person knows their own limitations better than anyone else does. on the boat, this warmth, camaraderie, people working together under sometimes very difficult conditions. And it's just a matter of getting the job done. It doesn't matter who does it, it gets done. I'm a person that likes a challenge. Science is very challenging, mentally and, and physically. Intellectually, it's very stimulating, very challenging. That's what I really love about the job, the challenge.